Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks for making a brand new project. This is the Lovey Baby Stuffed Crochet Toys Project. These easy and quick stuffed toys are soft and squishy, great for hugging. They make wonderful emotional support dolls for anyone who needs a little extra comfort, a cuddle, or a hug. This pattern includes three sizes of Lovey Babies. Make one or make them all. You will need 150 yards of number three DK weight yarn, an E4 or 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, yarn needle, scissors, and fiber fill. Let's get started. All of the Lovey Babies begin at the crown, and I'll be showing you how to make the smallest sized in this video. If you would like to see the instructions for the medium or large, just follow the link in the video description to get the pattern on my website. So we tie our yarn to our crochet hook. You can use a slip knot, a square knot, it does not matter. There's no wrong way to tie your yarn to your hook. And we start with a chain two. We're going to work six single crochets in the second chain from our hook. Remember, we don't count the loop on our hook. That's the working loop, so we'll count back one, two, single crochet, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. That's one single crochet. We'll do that a total of six times. And that's what the end of round one should look like. We're not going to join our rounds. We're going to be working in a spiral. So round two begins with two single crochets into the first stitch. So we'll work one single crochet into that stitch and then work a second one as well. And work two single crochets in each stitch around. Okay, this is what the end of round two should look like and you should have 12 single crochets. Round three begins with two single crochets into the first stitch and one single crochet into the next stitch. And our repeat for this round is two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch. And this is what the end of round three should look like and you should have 18 single crochets. Round four begins with two single crochets in the first stitch and one single crochet each into each of the next two stitches. And our repeat for this round is two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet each into each of the next two stitches. And you wanna repeat that all the way around. This is what the end of round four should look like. You should have 24 stitches. Round five begins with two single crochets into the first stitch and one single crochet each into each of the next three stitches. And our repeat for this round is two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet each into each of the next three stitches. And you wanna repeat that all the way around. <laughs> this is what the end of round five should look like. You should have 30 stitches. This is the end of the crown for size small. Please refer to the pattern to follow the extra rounds for the medium and large size. Next we're going to work on the sides of the head and this would be for all sizes and the next round would be to work one single crochet in each stitch around. And depending on which size you're making you want to repeat that round four, five, or six more times. This is what your project should look like at the end of the sides of the head. Now we're ready to begin the body and we're going to grab a second color of yarn and on when you're changing color within a row, you want to start your next stitch, but finish it with the new color before you switch to the new color. So we'll finish the last step of the last stitch in color A with color B, and then we will single crochet all the way around in color B. Now carry a work over my tail too, so it's one less thing to weave in at the end. So you wanna work one round of single crochet in color B. And then we'll work a second round also in color B. And then work two rounds of single crochet in color A. And then we repeated rounds one through four one more time for size small. Please refer to the pattern to find how many times you repeat these four rounds for sizes medium and large. And now we're ready to begin the bottom decreases of the body. 
Okay, this is different for each size, so again, please refer to the free pattern. The link is in the video description to find out how to do this for each size. I'm doing size small, and so our first stitch is single crochet two together. So we're gonna insert our crochet hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert our crochet hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook. That's one single crochet two together, which is a single decrease. Then one single crochet into each of the next three stitches four size small, and that's what we will repeat around. Single crochet two together over the next two stitches, and then one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And we'll repeat that all the way around. This is what the end of the first decreased round should look like. The second decreased round begins with single crochet two together over the next two stitches, and then one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And so our repeat for this round is single crochet two together over the next two stitches and one single crochet each into each of the next two stitches. And you want to repeat that all the way around. Now this is what your work should look like at the second round of decreases for the lower body. And now we'll work our third and last round of decreases for the lower body. And that begins with a single crochet two together over the next two stitches and then one single crochet in the next stitch. Our repeat around is single crochet two together over the next two stitches and then one single crochet in the next stitch. And you wanna repeat that all the way around. Okay, so now we're ready to fasten off. You wanna make sure that you leave your tail long enough that you can sew up that bottom seam. But first we're going to stuff our lovey baby with some polyfill. You can decide how soft and squishy you want your babies to be depending on how much fiber fill you fill them with. The more you fill it with, the more dense the animals will be, and the less you fill it with, the more squishy they'll be. But you just want to insert your fiber fill into that hole at the bottom of the body. And then just kind of work it around so that there's no gaps or holes in the body. Make sure it's gone all the way up to the top. And when you think it feels the right level of squishiness you want, you can seam up the bottom. And what we're going to do, for the bottom of this body, we're going to thread our yarn through, the tail yarn through a yarn needle. And we're going to sew this seam flat. So just pinch it right in half and sew along the bottom edge. If we cinched these and made it round at the bottom, it would make it more of a cylinder. This is what gives us a definitive front and back side, which makes more sense for adding legs to the bottom. Fasten that off, and then we can just insert our needle up through the body. And cut the tail. So there, our body is complete, and now it's time to make ears, arms, and legs. For each lovey baby you make, you want to make two each of the arms, two each of the legs, and two each of the ears. And each one starts with tying our yarn to our crochet hook, square knot, slip knot, doesn't matter. We're going to start with the legs. Legs start with a chain, one, a chain two, and we're going to work eight single crochets in the second chain from our hook. And that's what the end of round one should look like. And now we're going to work in a spiral and just make a little tube. We're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around for eight more rounds. I'll show you the first round. Because we're not increasing, this will end up turning on itself and creating a tube. All right, so that's what the end of round two should look like. Round three is a repeat of round two, one single crochet into each stitch around and you'll start to see the leg turning. What we'd like to do is encourage it to turn to the outside. And we're just gonna keep repeating this until we have a total of nine rounds. At the end of nine rounds total, you want to cut your yarn, leaving a long tail for sewing the leg onto the body. And you wanna make two of the legs. Then we're going to make the arms the arms begin also with tying our yarn to our crochet hook. 
arms begin with a chain two and work six single crochets in the second chain from your hook. This is what your work should look like at the end of round one. And then you wanna work five rounds of single crochet in each stitch around. At the end of the sixth round, this is what the arm should look like. You wanna cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail for sewing the arms to the body. And you wanna make sure you make two arms. Next, we'll make the ears. The ears begin with tying our yarn to our crochet hook. Chain two. And working four single crochets in the second chain from our hook. One, round two is to work one single crochet in each of the four stitches around. And then round three is to work two single crochets in each stitch around. This is what your work should look like at the end of round three, and you should have eight single crochets in the round. Round four is to work one single crochet in each stitch around. And then rounds five through nine are to repeat round four. At the end of round nine, we're going to cut our yarn and fasten off. Make sure you leave your tail long enough for sewing the ears onto your lovey baby. So there we have a leg, an arm, and an ear. You wanna make two of each. And then I'll show you how to sew them to the body and how to make the very simple eyes. You want to sew the arms, legs, and ears to the body in the positions as shown in the photo. And once you sew them to the body, you can weave in the loose end of the tail yarn by simply pushing it through the body. I'll show you when I finish sewing the leg. And also keep in mind symmetry. Wherever you place the leg, you wanna make sure the other leg makes sense. And same with the ears and the arms. You wanna make sure that they're symmetrical to the opposite side. I'll show you on a finished one in a second here. So once you secure that in place, you want to take your tail and just push it through the body like that. And you can cut your tail. Here's a finished lovey baby. And you want to make sure that your arms are the same, at the same height on each side of the body. You want to make sure that the legs are evenly spaced across the lower base. And you want to make sure the ears are evenly spaced at the top as well. So now let's do the eyes. So we're going to take an 18 inch piece of dark contrast yarn. I'm using navy, Be So Baby yarn, but you could use any dark color. You could use black or brown or gray, or you could even use the contrast color of the stripe here. That would work as well. Okay, we've got our yarn threaded onto our yarn needle. I'm going to insert it into the body of the work. And now, as we get ready to work it back through the work, we're going to wrap the yarn around our, need around our needle eight times, loosely. And then go back through the work, sliding it through the needle, sliding, all those, sliding the needle through all those wraps and then through the work, and then slowly sliding that yarn through all the wraps and then work back through the work one more time. To secure the eye in place. And then we can tie our tail and our working yarn together and weave in both loose ends. The ends get woven into the inside of the body and back out. 
and then just simply cut your tails. And then for the mouth, we'll take one more piece of yarn in the same color that we did the eyes in, thread it onto our yarn needle, thread it onto our yarn needle, and then picking where we want to add a smile. I want the smile to be a little bit thicker than, than the yarn, so I'm going to work over each stitch two times. And again, we want to try to be symmetrical. So however much we angle and however tall the first side of the smile is, you want to try to match that for the second side. and then you want to secure your yarn and weave in your loose ends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. And if you check out the video description, I've provided links for everything we talked about in this video. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.